Hi, this is Amanda Woods and I'm the Children's Librarian at the Allen County Public Library. And a lot of times we want to focus on our best programs and they often refer to our summer reading events. And while our summer reading programs are always great, I like to show off some other things that we're doing. And this one was a really big hit for us this year. This year it was um, called Touch the Truck. And I don't want to get all of the praise for this. I saw this idea from the Mary Woodwell, the Memorial Library in Barron County, maybe a year prior to us hosting this event. And so after, you know, looking at what they did, I saw some things that we could do on, on, on our end to meet, to meet our community. And I think it worked out really well. So our best program of 2022, in my opinion, was the Touch the Truck event. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But first, how do you prepare for these big programs? And all of you librarians know that um, the first thing you wanna do is look at your calendar and see what dates are available. So we wanted to try to reach as many people as we could and uh, fall break just seemed to be that time. While there are a lot of people away on vacation, we do know that there is a lot of needs that can be met during that time of the year as well. I think I talked to my director about this program back when she was planning the yearly budget in July and she said that would be great just find a date that would work and we'll get the ball rolling so we looked at our calendar what worked best for us and that was during a uh, fall break we wanted to coordinate with our local officials the first person I spoke with was our mayor and he's wonderful uh, my husband actually worked works for the city of Scottsville so I've kind of got some legs in that race as well uh, but we wanted to really highlight and show off the equipment that the city of Scottsville has and what they do to help get these big jobs done for our city. So once I got the okay from our um, mayor and the city barn crew, that's when we started to promote the ads. We made the ads. We always wanted to make sure to include the partnership logos of who we're working with. Um, and I showed off the ad first thing to the mayor to make sure that everything looked good on his end as well. Then you just make sure and put it out there. Facebook, your local paper. Our radio station is wonderful. They have a weekly radio show with the mayor that happens every Friday morning. And so I think that plug helped us a lot to get this word out to the community in a different way. But also in my regular programs throughout the week, I would talk about the new program coming up. Um, we had window ads all over the library. We've got an in-house uh, TV with a slider that shows off the different programs taking place. And of course it was on our calendar. We had to think about parking. Uh, in past programs, we have asked permission from the mayor to block off different parts of the square. But because we wanted this to be a really library oriented program, we wanted to use our own parking lot. And parking, you know, in any town can be hard um, to spare. Uh, but we talked to the director uh, and with the mayor and what would work with our vehicles and our back parking lot seemed to be the best <clears throat> bet for that. You want to follow up with your uh, people, your partners, you want to advertise again and again, and then you want to walk off uh, the lot when it's appropriate. You want to help the officials that are bringing in the equipment. And last, which is always the hard part for me, uh, but trusting that the crowd will indeed come because we do a lot of preparation work, right? We're doing all this stuff to get everything done, but then the worst thing that can happen is you might have two or three show up and you just feel like it's not been worth it. But this was not the case with this program. So this was the ad itself. It was touch the truck and I've got all of this off of Canva. If you've not used Canva, I would encourage you, and I'm sure there's other programs out there that are great as well, but we really enjoy Canva. Um, very basic, um, it has the main uh, title of the program, a little blurb about what's gonna happen, the date, we did include our website for more information, and then of course our library's logo and the city of Scottsville's logo as well. And as soon as I got this made, uh, I probably made this about two months in advance, I went ahead and forwarded that to our mayor and he got the approval too and that's where we started advertising was at that point. Even on the day of the event, so for the two months that we were advertising for the program, either whether it be maybe twice weekly and then weekly and then of course um, the day of the event, we wanted to remind the public that the back lot of our uh, building would be blocked off because um, even though you have 
um, told them time and time again that we would have to spare some parking for this program. It never fails on the day of the program. You're going to have somebody parked back there that you're going to have to ask to move or somebody's going to drive up wanting to use the lot and be discouraged because they can't get in. So we just want to put a little reminder out there that we will have the back parking lot <clears throat> blocked off during that time. And we always do the hashtag with the event name, which was touch the truck. <clears throat> and luckily our crowd came. We had 142 children and caregivers attend this program. Uh, the city of Scottsville, they were great enough to bring in four equipment vehicles. Uh, it included a backhoe. We had a mini excavator. There was a dump truck. And I'm trying to think of the other thing. There was four different things that the kids got to get on and, uh, and utilize. Uh, but, but anyway, the main guy here in the yellow, his name was John Carter, and he's the main operator for the city of Scottsville. And my husband, who is bald, says, I would trust that man to um, comb my hair. He's so delicate with his work. So he's really proud of the work that he does for the town. And he got the kids engaged. This is just a small number of the kids that were there. They kind of came in different droves. We had that first influx of people that attended and then they just kept on coming and coming and coming. I had anticipated this to be maybe a 30 to 45 minute event. It ended up being an hour and 15 minutes. They just did not want to leave. Um, and I do remember my husband, you know, you hear city barn stuff talk um, prior to the event. And a lot of the workers were just kind of not looking forward to it. Um, they deal with rocks and, you know, mud and sewage and all this stuff. They don't really deal with kids and families on a day-to-day -day basis. So this was kind of out of their comfort level. Um, and so as they were coming in, they were kind of, you know, let's just get this job done kind of thing. But once the crowd was there and they saw the kids' faces, they didn't want to leave. Uh, I remember the supervisor telling me, he said, we can make this uh, program last all day if you need us to. He was really tickled with it, with the attendance. So it was a it was, a, it was a fun turnout. So the goals of this program, we wanted to really showcase the value uh, that is in trade jobs. Um, I know when I was in school, and not that it, I mean, it's very important and education is very important, but it was always drilled in my head that you have to go to college. You have to go to college and get this four-year degree. And that is important, but it's not for everybody. So we wanted to show that there are values in different types of work. and this is just one of those jobs, um, just seeing the different equipment that is possible for them to use was something that we wanted them to um, be able to see. Our, um, our uh, leaders who talked about the program, they showed in a basic way how the equipment works and they also showed how it would be a lot harder for them to do their jobs if they didn't have this, um, these equipment for them to use daily. We wanted to erase stereotypes. A lot of people um, see that this is a man's field, um, that you know, men do the hard work when it comes to operating heavy machinery and doing the dirty jobs. Um, but we want, to, you know, we want this to be a female-oriented thing as well. Uh, we showcase various departments. The city of Scottsville has different departments. It's like the barn crew, you've got the water treatment plant, in different places. So all of these machines help each other get their things finished. Awareness that um, there are big jobs that people just don't realize. Um, they're not just going over and picking up junk and brush. Um, they're not just going over and reading your water meter. When you have a water leak in the middle of winter and it's 22 degrees, you know, they're going to make sure to get that hug doll, that hug, I'm sorry, that I can't even talk, that whole dug for you um, in those really cold temperatures um, with that cold, cold water, and they're going to get that fixed for you. So people just aren't aware of what they do from a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the collaboration working with the city was really important for me. I think that we all work better when we work together, and we can really show our strengths when we're doing things like that. And of course, we wanted this to be a fun day and activity for everyone. It was a great photo op. I had permission from all of these kids to use their pictures today. Um, we had girls and boys. We had young kids and teenagers. It wasn't just a one size fits all. It was, it was, it was a one size fits all. It was, but you didn't have just one um, 
age of persons there. You had families bringing small kids, you had grandpas bringing, you know, their teenagers. We had people that were visiting town who didn't know about the event, who stopped in to see what all the fuss was about. Um, I know the mayor had said one thing because um, he visited while he was, while we, while we did this program. And um, there was a one lady who, one young lady who was in the mini excavator. And he said, you know, we could be looking at future operators here in the city of Scottsville. And I hope that's a true thing. I will say that this program did um, cause quite the stir with sound because all the kids were allowed to get in the machinery. They had lines going from different machines uh, and people got to go from one machine to the other. There were so many horns honking um, at one time and it was really loud, but it really you know, let people know that there's something big going on at the library and they wanted to see what was going on. It was a really great day. And I know that was short and sweet, but it was just a wonderful program. And I would encourage you to talk to your local officials and see if that'd be a possibility for you. It was completely free. I know that can be a, a budget constraint sometimes when you're looking at programs. But when you, you've got these city things going on, you've got different partnerships that are accessible and they want to help. But sometimes we have to be the one asking for that in order to get anything initiated. So I'd encourage you to maybe venture out and do a touch the truck program. If you have any questions or info, um, anything that you'd like to ask me, feel free to contact me uh, by phone or by my email, which is listed here on this slide. Uh, and I really appreciate your time today. And yeah, I think it was, it was a great program, touch the truck. All right, and that was Allen County's presentation uh, for their tr Touch the Truck program. So um, I know it's a, usually a, a big hit wherever um, libraries um, put it on. So next we're going to, um, <clears throat> sorry about that, um, move into Casey County's presentation. And we have Ms. Michelle Yates that is going to talk to you all about that. So, um, Michelle, you have been made a presenter, so you should be able to um, unmute your microphone and um, chat with everybody and um, let them know what your all's program was. So you can take it away whenever you would like. Can you all hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, I'm sorry. This is my very first live. So um, I'm going to see if I can. Oh, and we see you too. Okay, great. Because I can't see myself. So I have no idea. Um, okay, so our best program that we had, um, our best my computer is so wonky. I am so sorry, you all. Okay. Can everybody still see me? We can't see you right now. You go in and out, but that's okay. Okay. So I'm good right now? Well, we can't see you right now. We can still hear you, though. Okay. There we go. Can you see me now? We can see you now. Yes. Right. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I am not going to touch anything else. Um, our best program for 2023 was our Reading Dragons program, and I don't know if you guys can see my shirt. Um, I'm actually wearing one of the shirts that we had made that are um, for the participants to be able to win. So what it is, it's a program that we actually adapted from uh, Dover County um, Public Library. And I'm not sure where that was. Our assistant director found that. So I'm not sure if it's, there's one in New Hampshire and there's a Dover Public Library in Ohio. So I'm not sure which one it was. But they were willing to share their information for us. So we've got over 400 participants signed up for this program. Um, around 200 of them came from the schools. So we've had huge participation through the school and then just our regular patrons coming in. But what they do is they read 30 minutes a day and they color in eggs, uh, dragon eggs, like is uh, like we use for summer reading, the little circles that we use for that. 
Um, I've got some things to show you. I couldn't get my slides to come up. Um, but they get a packet when they sign up. Um, they get something that looks like this. Um, but what they do is when they read 30 minutes a day, they um, they actually color in their eggs on a sheet like this, and they bring it into the library. And the ones that they have colored, we actually hole punch them to keep track of everything when they get their egg um, or their dragon. They kind of evolve from an egg to a baby to um, the juvenile into the adult. And with those, they can actually battle and we have competitions. I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. Um, but they will do that. They get instructions on how to do it, on how to, you know, how many much time they should read, how they bring it into the library and what they do. Um, we have special um, events that we have. I will show you some of our, these go to the schools and they can pick if they want the entire line just depends on how many eggs that they have colored and it counts their reading counts as anything it can be their school books it can be um, the AR reading that they do on the computer it can be Facebook magazines anything that they read or someone reads to them they can count that as long as it's 30 minutes and it's kind of on a trust basis um, but I will show you we actually used um, a local uh, patron who is very, very talented. Um, and she's actually evolved some of our dragons that we received from the Dover uh, library into her own creations. And these are some of the ones that she did. This is, these are our dragons for December. And I don't know how well you guys can see, but this is the egg um, that is actually the candy cane egg. And there's the baby. Here is the juvenile. And then that is what it'll look like as an adult. And the when they come into competitions once a month, they actually battle. And it's kind of like on, if you're familiar with the Pokemon cards, it, it's um, kind of like that. They Red will trump blue, blue trumps green, green trumps red. And it's kind of in that cycle. And that's how they can uh, they compete. And then whoever has, and it's on a point system as well. So whoever has the most points or gets to that limit first actually wins that particular competition. Um, but we have gingerbread for this month. We have Melikaliki Maka for this month. And also um, reindeer. The reindeer is actually my favorite one for this month. So I'll show you it. Um, and we have a competition going, um, actually here in just a couple of weeks. So we have one little boy who is, I believe he is nine and we've had competitions since August and he has won every one of them. So he is totally stoked to come back as reigning champion and, um, win again this time. But each month we have a, um, special edition card or a limited edition card. It just kind of depends on how we advertise it. Um, but we had, these are some of our, we did this one um, for October. This was our child um, coloring sheet. All they had to do was color it, decorate it, do whatever they wanted to, bring it in, and they got a limited edition card for April. Uh, or, I'm sorry, October. <laughs> We're not in April yet. This one was our teenager one. And, um, then this one was our an adult, and I actually I have permission to use all of these. So, and he actually went a step further and cut his out and made it 3D. I know it's hard to tell, but he actually made it 3D, so it's raised up in those dimensions. Um, but if they brought those back, they actually got the it card from Stephen King. Um, she created this one especially for that particular thing. Um, this month, we're doing a um, card decorating, card making. We're using our maker space, which has just newly been set up. And what they're doing is they're making cards for um, like our senior citizen center, um, some people that um, some of the patrons come in and say, hey, can you send this person a card? 
Um, it's a passive program that we do, and they will be able to get the gift of the Magi card, which is what is it's based off the book. They took those dimensions um, for that off of there. Um, this was our most popular one, which was the Harry Potter. Um, I collect the cards. I do not battle. I'm not good at that. We recently had our um, Apple Festival in September, and our uh, patron that is creating our cards, she actually created the Apple Pie Dragon, which was extremely popular during the month of September. Everybody wanted that one. Um, and this is our, the bookworm card is our, that is kind of like our mascot card for this year. Next year we'll probably do something different. Um, that's that one. So that's kind of all I have. If you guys want to email me and I can send you some specifics or I can send you what we've got, you're more than welcome to use it. Um, it is extremely popular, and I've even had um, some of the teachers at the schools say that kids that were not interested in reading, they couldn't get them to read, they couldn't, um, you know, get them to finish their assignments or anything. They've incorporated this program, and it has been a total hit. So um, my email is Michelle Yates at kclibrary.org. I'll put it in the chat too if you guys want to email me. I can send you more specifics or I can send you kind of what we do and it would be um, a great program for your library. We we have been blown away by the amount of interest there's been in this program. So that was short and sweet and that's all I have. I hope you guys have a great day. All right. Thank you so much, Michelle. That is awesome. I want to do it. Me and uh, Kimber, Kimberly here in the office were like, oh, man, we want our library to do that. <laughs> so thank you so much for presenting, Michelle. If y'all have any questions, um, feel free for Michelle. Feel free to put those in the chat or contact her via email. And I know she will be very, very glad to talk with you all um, about that. So Next we have coming up is another recorded session from Henry County and um, for this part of the presentation they will be talking about the their farmers market that they put on. So we are going to get that uh, re recording started here in just a second. Hey, I'm Kara Woods with the Henry County Public Library. I am the Adult Services Librarian. And I am Suzanne Banta. I am the Youth Services Librarian here at Henry County. And um, we would like to present our Friday Night Farmers Market, um, which is a once, once a month pro program that we do on the third Friday of every month. Um, we partner with the Chamber of Commerce for Henry County, and Suzanne's going to talk a little more about that. So the the farmers market started as a partnership with with the Chamber of Commerce, who is one of our biggest community partners. Um, we always have a um, someone who is sitting on the the board of directors from the public library, and right now that person is me. Um, I've only been an official chamber member now for probably six months, but have worked with Holly, the executive director, on other projects in the past. And just to tell you the kind of partnership we have, we also partner together to host um, events, networking events, um, which we just hosted here at the public library a couple months ago, one for all the chamber members. Um, we partner together with the chamber and with our local newspaper to put on a candidate showcase every four years when it's time to elect magistrates and county judge executives. Um, and we also, all of our staff at one point or another will have participated in the Chamber of Commerce Leadership Program. So we all get to know Holly really well and um, all work together um, on the mission of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the, the farmer's market actually started as a conversation between Holly and um, 
our former adult services librarian, Natalie, who was at that time the chamber board member and myself, we were just talking about um, some ideas for working together. And this was really Holly's baby. She had this vision to have this farmer's market on a Friday night when there weren't other, other farmer's markets or other places going on to really support all of, not just our local farmers, but our local artisans and craftspeople um, and to give them a place where they could come together, everybody can network, everybody can see this amazing, um, the amazing things that are available in our community. So it started with a conversation and then um, it we pulled the director in so that he could go to um, our board of directors because the board of trustees actually had to change the policies so that um, local artisans and farmers um, and food trucks could come and actually sell their goods and services on the library property. Um, so that kind of did give us a startup cost for our farmers market. Um, there's always costs with any, of course, programming usually. Um, we did have to get a business license from the city of Eminence, which is where we're located, and we paid about $100 for that. Or it was at 100. Yes, it was 100. I'm sorry. Um, poor choice of wording there. But the farmer's market, um, we, as far as advertisement, we have flags that were $180. Um, we have three of them that we put in front of the library every Friday, or on the Friday of the farmer's market. Um, and so that kind of alerts people that it is the third Friday. Um, but that's pretty much, I believe, our initial startup cost. I came in about a year later, um, but this I took this from our records. Um, we start our season kickoff with our spring shindig, um, which takes place in March. We do do our spring shindig on a Saturday, and it's kind of like the big, um, announcement. Um, this is what to expect with our Friday night farmers market. Um, I actually came in at July. I worked here in March, but I didn't take over for the adult services in July, so I haven't had a chance to really experience it yet. Um, but we do invite a lot of other community organizations, such as our Head Start, um, the Health Department, Animal Shelters, and we have our artisans and our farmers as well. Okay, um, as far as our vendors for our market, um, they must be local. So our ideal of local is anyone from Henry County or any of the surrounding counties, um, which for us includes Shelby, Oldham, Owen, Trimble. Um, we do not charge any fees for our vendors to set up. This um, really attracts vendors. Most farmer markets charge a fee. So essentially, if they don't sell anything, they're out anything other than time, but most of them actually have a great time when they're here. So they kind of see it as a social aspect, um, a way to really bond with the community and then sell their goods, but also let them know that where they else they might be at if they can't, somebody doesn't bring cash day and they're a cash only vendor. Um, they can say, hey, I'll be at the Shelbyville Farmer's Market tomorrow morning, you can stop by there. Um, that really, I found, um, brings in people if they finally don't have to pay anything. Um, we do ask that our vendors sign a liability release form. This did go through our lawyers, I believe. Yeah. Um, and it's just saying the library is not liable for, you know, any accidents or their goods. We usually have about 15 to 22 vendors so far. It's been increasing um, throughout the year. People are finding out about our farmer's market and wanting to join. Um, when we do um, do our farmer's market, we can we have the option of doing it indoors as well as outdoors. So it's never canceled. Um, when our building was built, um, we just moved in three years ago. February of 2020. February of 2020. Yeah, you all know how that went. Um, <laughs> but our building was specifically built at the new location to allow for um, indoor flexibility. So all of our furniture is designed to be moved out of the way. 
Um, we have a meeting room that opens up into the rest of the library. Um, and it allows us really the space to do these types of programs. And then one thing that, that um, we make known is that the library always has a booth that always offers something free to do, whether it's free for adults or it's free, it's some kind of activity that you can walk up and do for free. Because as Kara is going to talk about in a minute, there is music in a food truck. So even if you don't want to come and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, you can still come and listen to some free music and do a free activity mm -hmm. at the library booth. Which um, takes us on to our next slide, um, music in a food truck. So we always invite a food truck. Um, we try to get food trucks that do not charge a service fee to come or you don't have to meet a minimum requirement of food sold. Um, we are kind of a smaller area, um, a more rural location. So our food trucks really don't expect you to pay a fee. Um, we're very blessed in that way. Um, but we always have a food truck and advertise that on our social media and the food trucks actually get a lot of the draw in um in our last november it was so cold <laughs> we did our farmers market indoor but we had people literally driving up for a curbside service with the food truck um we also have our local mus musician don edlin play he plays at every farmers market he has quite the little following um they come over just to listen to him play and the Henry County Chamber does cover the cost of his performance. So um, we kind of paid for the initial startup, they pay for Dawn, and um, it does work out for us that way. And then um, as far as attendance goes, it has been kind of increasing. June, we had around 200 people, I believe, and we did do that one indoors because I think it was so hot. Um, in July, we did ours um, outdoors and we only had 90 people. Um, it was really, really hot that day as well. Um, and so you can kind of see that fluctuation. And then in August, we had 274 people and we did that one outdoors and I believe we had burnout barbecue. Check this out, burnout. Yeah, which is a big draw, but people came up for the barbecue and where we were outdoors, they walked over the vendors. Um, in September, we had 300 people. Um, it's you know, steadily increasing. And then you're going to notice in October, we had 705 people, which seems extreme. However, we um, took the chance to combine that with a, another, our big fall bash, which leads us to um, we'll go into that in just a moment, but you'll notice our numbers significantly dropped in November. Um, we did have the farmer's market indoors. However, it was the really, really cold day that we just had. It was freezing. Um, I think it's probably the coldest day we've had so far. So, um, obviously, attendance wasn't as good with that because it's, you know, getting dark earlier and people just did not want to get out in 20 degree weather. <laughs> Blame them. But um, we're gonna go ahead and talk about our big fall festival that we've yeah. combined with our farmer's market. And why our numbers increased so much yeah. in October. In um, September, I was having a conversation with my director about how I don't know what we're gonna do in October this year because we've been doing drive through trick or treat and it was really popular, but I don't think it'll be this popular this year. And you know, we have other big community events that we do, so how can we not be stretched so thin? So it was actually his idea to combine whatever we were doing for a big Halloween event with our farmer's market. He mm -hmm. said, why don't we just bring it all together and just do one big night? So um, Kara and I talked to Holly and Holly was in and we had a meeting. So we decided to call it the Fall Festival and Farmer's Market. Um, we invited, in addition to the 22 vendors that we usually mm -hmm. had, we invited in um, some extra service providers that we don't usually invite, like the health department, our local friskies, our NAB vets, to come and pass out candy. Um, had some extra vendors. We had somebody who actually came and sold cotton candy, which was kind of fun. And um, we had some activities set up in our learning depot. And then um, we also hosted a haunted house, which was a huge draw that we'll talk about um, in a second. We um, there were some hiccups along the way. We we learned that you can't 
you know, mm -hmm. the haunted house was a last minute addition. So we definitely need more than two weeks next year to plan a haunted house. And our food truck canceled, what, three days before? Three or four days? No, it was the same day. Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah. So, um, they canceled around noon. They had a breakdown. Um, luckily, one of our other staff members is good friends with somebody else that owns a food truck here. And they had been planning on going to a different event, but they're like, no, we'll come there. However, I would say that actually worked out in their favor. They yeah. sold out by 8 p.m. And we had, um, there were only f over 50 or like 57 kids in the costume contest. Mm -hmm. That was a lot too. So that was one of yeah. the things that will change for next year. And unfortunately, Kara, <laughs> who is the adult services librarian, <laughs> ran the costume, costume contest, contest for kids because yes. I was in the haunted house. So. so, yes, you don't leave the adult services librarian to run the children's program, <laughs> especially when they don't have kids of their own to realize that ages between four and 11 are the most popular trick or treating costumes that's how you end up with 47 kids in one category yeah um but our these are just some photos of our haunted house which i said like i said we planned in two weeks we had two meetings of those of us who decided that we were going to plan it um and we just started gathering supplies we brought supplies we had at home we came we threw out all throughout some ideas there was a lot of pinteresting going on um, but this is just some things that we have. I, my husband has one of those 12 foot Home Depot skeletons. So we set it up in the library and we took pictures the day before and posted them online. Um, and then our haunted house, we just set up like it was after dark library programs and the ghosts had all come out to like have an animal show and a birthday party and a, a, a carnival and all these things that were going on. Um, I will say one of the things that we learned is that our teen volunteers are incredibly important to our haunted house. We had amazing volunteers who dressed in costume all night long and scared a bunch of kids and some adults, mm -hmm. um, which was, I'll admit, kind of the favorite, my favorite part of the night. Um, but I think the haunted house, the trick or treat, like all of this combined together created this amazing program that over 700 people came through um, in that night. I will tell you that the haunted, we tried to keep our costs down really, really low for everything that we did. So we were thinking today about um, how much we actually spent uh, on the, like the fall festival part of it. Um, I just use leftover like Halloween activities and supplies that I already had on hand for all of my crafts and activities. So that didn't cost us anything. I spent about $50 worth of stuff on the haunted house. We used Amazon points for the bigger things we bought for the haunted house and are now saving our points up for next year's haunted house. Um, we did spend a whole lot of money on command strips. That was a lesson that we learned mm -hmm. is that you can't have enough command strips when you're doing a haunted house. Mm -hmm. So all told in with everything that we did that night, um, including the candy that we purchased to hand out at the end of the haunted house and to have some extra on hand um, for our vendors who were also part of the trick-or-treat event. Um, we probably spent like between $400 and $450 on, um, on the farmer's market or the fall festival mm -hmm. farmer's market to have the return be over 700 people, many of which had never been in the building before who were there not just to trick or treat or um, see our, our haunted house, but who also supported some local, um, all kinds of local farmers and businesses and mm -hmm. arts and crafts people who were here that they didn't even know existed. Like they may not have known that there's a woman in, in the county who made the most amazing zucchini bread you've ever tasted in your life, or that there is a new business that just started this summer that makes caramels and fudge or um, that you can buy your own honey locally, like, or mm -hmm. I don't know, stuff. we had all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, we had around, that was one of our biggest vendor, um, vendor times. Um, we loved our farmer's market. We're planning on doing it again. There are a few things that we wanna change, like any programming, it's a learning experience as well. We are going to change our name next year. Um, Love Local is the, um, slogan of the Chamber of Commerce. So we are considering calling it the Love Local Market. Um, a lot of times people show up and go, where's the produce? And it's not really the season for the produce. Um, therefore, you know, there's sometimes some kind of dimmed expectations or um, 
So we are going to change our name. And, and then um, one learning lesson we've also is our vendor packet is quite lengthy. Um, we are going to kind of re go through that and um, make the application problem or not problem um, process <laughs> seem a little more um, quicker and easier, not as intimidating. Um, so, but that's, you know, if the lawyers agree with us. So, um, but, you know, I think it really brought our community together. It got a lot of visitors into the library that haven't been here before. And we really think it's a great library program and wanted to share it with everyone. It brought our staff together too. It's it the did, first indeed. program that we have done in this new building where almost the entire staff was here and almost the entire staff participated in some way, whether it was directing traffic or leading people through the mm -hmm. haunted house or um, just kind of cleaning up after everything. But we were all one cohesive team for this. So we were really excited. Also, we're planning way earlier. This mm -hmm. year. Yep. So new summer readings over. It's, it's on the, the haunted house and fall festival. Um, so anybody can email either one of us or give us a call if you have questions or want to know any more about, you know, our partnership with the chamber or our farmer's market or the fall festival, yeah. anything. So, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to add um, either. So, yeah, just thank you for listening to this talk, talk. talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about something we're really excited about. <laughs> Could I ask you all a couple questions, actually, just out of curiosity? Yes, please. Um, What's your average number of vendors? Does it, I'm sure it varies just depending on time of year and what's available. Mm -hmm. So we usually, I would say the average is probably 15 to 17. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty regular. It's not always the same vendors either. We do not have a policy that says you have to come to every single farmer's market. Life gets busy and we want to make it as easy as possible for our vendors as well. We want them to come back. Sure. Um, so it does average, I would say we probably have had around 30 to 35 applications. Um, and most people do get approved. It's just, you know, they might show up to one or two and then have their sons have football or <laughs> um, their sports. Well, and like the Kentucky Renaissance Fair is in our, in our community too. And so, and Holly's family also owns the the Renaissance Fair. So like we had a vendor in the summer mm -hmm. who was actually someone who had a booth at the Renaissance Fair who just brought her, their stuff to a Friday night farmer's market over mm -hmm. the summer. So it, it really does vary. Yeah. Gotcha. And does it, so is there like a requirement that they're selling some sort of food or produce or is it also like <laughs> Sorry, I set a timer. So we it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being conscious of the time. Can they also sell crafts or do they have to have some sort of food item that they're selling? No, oh, it does not have to be food. I have bought so many pairs of earrings at the farmer's market. Yes. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. It definitely does not have, have to, to be, be food. Yeah. We just ask that our vendors are local, um, local and, you know, it's either items that they've made themselves or although we are expanding that in the past, I believe it is in our policy that they needed to be artisan made by the, in Henry mm -hmm. County. However, our revised policy is that you just have to be the business owner in mm -hmm. Henry County. And we are, you know, going to try to abide by that. Yeah, we have a local author who writes um, books about the history of the County that he sells at the farmer's market, oh, the no. historical society sells t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Our friends of the library group always has a booth and they set up like a, a used book sale at every one. So it's a, it's a wide variety of things. Awesome. Yeah, that's, it sounds like a great program. I'm really impressed with <laughs> how successful it's been. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, it's I, beyond like exceeded our yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for presenting. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. okay. All right. There's right. Charlie's voice there at the end. So um, we are moving on to our last, but definitely not least, uh, presentation today. 
um, Abby and Brian from Oldham County are going to talk to you all about their program. So Abby, I'm going to make you a presenter so that you should be able to um, use your microphone and uh, camera if you want to, totally up to you. Um, but you all take it away. All right. Hi, friends. I'm Abby Branstein, and Brian Walker is here with me. We're from the Oldham County Public Library, and we're here to talk to you today about the Great Goshen Cupcake Challenge. All right, so I'm going to tell you today what is the Cupcake Challenge and why you should consider having it at your library. And then Brian will give you details about how you can get started um, and all the nitty gritty to host this program at your library. So what is a cupcake challenge? Well, if you've ever seen the Netflix show Nailed It or Cupcake Wars, uh, that's basically the program. You've got 30 minutes to take a pre-baked cupcake and decorate it however you want. Uh, to the best of your ability. Um, you are limited by the materials that we have at the library. And this is one of uh, the winning cupcakes from our competition. They made a, um, a jack-o'-lantern. So um, why host this at your library? Well, you can see from that picture that this is a happy family enjoying a great experience together. Um, if you have kids, you may be hesitant to bake with them at home, so why not do it at the library where you can leave the mess and walk away, uh, and Brian and I will help clean up. Uh, so it is for the whole family to enjoy together, adults, seasoned bakers, or people who have never uh, decorated before, everyone can come together and learn in a safe environment where you don't have to worry about making mistakes or um, maybe um, you know trying something brand new you've never done before, like using fondant. Um, so it helped build community too with patrons. They were maybe seeing you know some old friends or meeting some new friends together. Everybody just had a great time together and. You all get to take home a delicious cupcake that you've um, decorated and are proud to have um, made. All right. I don't want a cupcake. <laughs> right. Who does it? Um, so we started planning this, uh, I would say a, a little over two months, probably right at two months out, which felt like the perfect amount of time to get this ready. Um, these were the items coming out of our first planning meeting that we decided were sort of the focus of the things we had to lock down. Um, we needed to determine a budget, how much we had and how much we could uh, spend on this. Um, thought about potential community partners, people that could help sponsor this or even donate supplies. Um, developing a supply list and deciding what we were going to provide for our patrons to create their work of cupcake art. Um, and then of course creating some guidelines. We didn't want things to just be crazy willy-nilly. We wanted to make sure that everybody was following sort of the same set of rules. Um, and then we designed some awards and came up with uh, a couple of ways to acknowledge um, the, the, the great work that was done with the cupcakes. Um, and then finally figuring out ways to promote it and get the word out um, sort of in the community, how we were going to get people to sign up. Um, so the first thing was uh, thinking about the budget. Um, uh, we were able to get our cupcakes donated. We have a great local bakery in LaGrange uh, called Q&A, um, and they were happy to support the library, and they gave us the cupcakes, blank cupcakes with no icing on it. Um, and then, uh, you know, things like icing, fondant, uh, additional decorations, plates, napkins, knives, awards. Uh, these were all things, you know, that we figured we would need to have to buy. Um, we had six tables. Um, six people at each table, and we had a caddy at each table that had five different colors of icing. We decided the best, the cleanest and maybe most sanitary way to, to give it to folks was in piping bags, so we needed to buy, you know, uh, 
six times five uh, piping bags plus tips for all of those. Um, and then we wanted to have some cool stuff. We wanted to have some stuff that maybe people wouldn't have the opportunity to work with at home. So we did want to spend some money on some fondant. Um, and, you know, you can buy some fun, cool little tools to manipulate the fondant. And then we just got some just some random decorations, some Skittles, some different candies, sprinkles and cookies and different things that people could utilize. Um, of course, plates, napkins, knives, uh, super important. Everybody had at their table, everyone sort of had a station with a piece of wax paper, um, a plate with their cupcake on it. Everybody had a plastic knife that they could use. Um, and then finally for awards, we decided not to spend any money on awards. Uh, we thought that the award was getting to do this. So we came up with some, uh, someone else had talked about Canva. We love Canva too. Uh, we came up with some more awards on Canva to give out and, and didn't spend any money on that part of it. So we ended up doing it for 36 people um, was the number of people that we let do the program, mostly because our building uh, is kind of small. We're limited in space. We could have certainly gotten more but we decided on 36 and then we ended up spending about five dollars um, a person for the 36 people um, so uh, going back just a moment to the community partners again if you're ever in LaGrange go to Q&A Sweet Treats they're awesome and they love the library um, Abby contacted them really early on and they were super excited to help us and give us the cupcakes um, but some things that we thought of afterwards were maybe like a Gus judge we didn't do we did the judging ourselves but we thought you know if we do it again that would have been fun to maybe invite someone from Q&A to be a guest judge or even contact uh, a city official or someone in the community that could come and help Gus judge. Um, and then finally, volunteers. Uh, we ran this with three staff and two volunteers, Abby and myself, and then Susan, our branch manager, and then we had two team volunteers to help us. We probably could have used one more volunteer. Um, Abby and I ended up kind of being stationed where we were for most of the evening. It would have been nice to have been able to walk around and interact a little bit more. I think it had we had maybe one more volunteer, we probably uh, could have done that. But, but five people, um, we made it happen. Um, so the guidelines that we came up with, uh, everyone had to utilize the same uh, stuff. No one was allowed to bring anything from home. No one was allowed to create anything weird or whatever. Everybody had to utilize the icing and the supplies that we um, supplied. Uh, everyone only had 30 minutes. So this uh, started at six o'clock. Everyone checked in, got their name signed off. They were given their blank cupcake. And then everybody knew at 630, the alarm was gonna go off. And everybody had to turn their cupcakes in for judging. So as you can see in this picture here, we just utilized our, <laughs> our young adult graphic novel section with a low shelf. Um, once they were done with their cupcake, they turned it into us. We gave them a number um, and then they were given two blank ballots. Everybody got to vote for their two favorites. Now, when we laid them out, we did separate them. We had our under 18s on one end and our over 18s because this was a multi-age uh, program. So we did separate those out just so you could see who the kids were and who were the adults were, but we didn't have any rules about voting. Just vote for your two favorites, whatever your two favorites were. Um, you got to vote. You had, we gave them like five or seven minutes to pick. They dropped those into the ballot. Um, and then uh, we furiously ran to the back to count, um, to count our ballots. Um, once we got to the award section, we counted up the ballots. Uh, so that was with 36 people times two. So we were sort of furiously going through counting and tallying um, who our patrons thought the best cupcakes were. So we came up with a participant favorite for under 18 and then our participant favorite for over 18. So both of them were awarded a certificate like three kind of fun superlatives we came up with. We wanted to make sure we knew who our patrons voted for first because we didn't want to give one person two awards. We wanted to give them to as many people as we could. So again, Canva, thank you, Canva. We created this little certificate, I made it official. We both filled it out and signed our names on it when we presented it. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. Um, but we had um, the best use of fondant uh, was one of our awards. And then uh, the most icing that this child piled onto this cupcake. And then um, the most unique design were sort of our three superlatives that we came up with. So um, challenges, you know, as we look back, how would we do it different? We want to let you know so that if you're doing this at your library, you could maybe think a little bit differently about it. 
we are certainly limited with space at our library. As you can see, we have the cupcakes right in the middle of the stacks. Um, and thankfully, there really wasn't a big mess. We just had some sprinkles on the floor. There was no icing all over books. So um, it really did work out pretty great. Um, we would definitely want to have some extra cupcakes. I think I was a little uh, nervous about asking Q&A sweet treats for cupcakes, so I only asked them for exactly as many as we needed. Um, I, I think I probably thought that we would have some people be no-shows, and in fact, we had everybody show. Unfortunately, one family was really late. They were about 30 minutes late, and we had given their cupcakes away to our team volunteers to decorate. So I definitely like to have some extra cupcakes in the future. I mean, we know they won't go to waste. So Absolutely. hoping the volunteers <laughs> or staff will decorate if we had extra. Um, I think additional staff person would have been helpful to help with the furious tallying of votes or um, sort of help patrons during that weird five minutes of time while we were sort of waiting around. Um, Plus, I ended up being at the supply table, which I highly recommend somebody there to sort of supervise that, but then I wasn't able to mill around, interact with patrons. Um, yes, and then I mentioned the late arrivals. The other thing that I would mention is we did this program for about $5. You could certainly do it for less. Um, we ended up having quite a bit of fondant left over, which I love that patrons could you know, test that out if they've never done it. But you could certainly eliminate all of the fondant and the extra tools and stuff if you wanted to do it for less expensive. So um, I know we're wrapping up right now, um, but this is uh, our email addresses. You can certainly uh, reach out to Brian and I. We loved working together on this program, um, children's programs and adults working together. Families really appreciate having something where everybody can come. And so not only will we definitely do this program again next year, but we will definitely do some more things where um, we're inviting families to come uh, together. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you're thinking about doing this program, uh, shoot us an email. We'd love to see pictures yes, of please. your program and if that, uh, that turns out well. So thank you. All right. Anybody have any questions? Do we have time for questions? Sure. Yes. If anybody has any questions, most definitely put those um, in the chat. And um, while we're waiting to see if any roll through, want to say thank you very much, Abby and Brian, for presenting. Greatly, greatly appreciate your all's time. And also um, Michelle from uh, Casey County for uh, presenting. Um, live as well. And of course, Alan and Henry that um, pre-recorded theirs, um, but still were willing to share their um, information. Um, you all being willing to do this um, greatly helps other libraries and it's all about collaboration and working um, together and sharing those ideas. So we really appreciate y'all taking the time. Um, so all right so if y'all have any questions chat those in um if not and everybody's um, ready to go in the upper left hand corner the three pancakes there just click on there and it will take you out of um, collaborate um, everybody um, should get a um, certificate for attending and the presenters will also get a uh, certificate for um, presenting. Um, so I think that's well, thank about you. Thank you for Thank you for having us and thank you for hosting this. We appreciate it. Oh, we love doing it. So we just thank you all for, for presenting. So it's a great thing. So everybody have a good rest of your afternoon you all take care out there and hopefully we will see you all again in one of our other webinars